Today, I want to talk to you about the sword of the Spirit. And speaking to you from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 16, 17, and 18, let me read those verses to you. We read this. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. One by one in Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul used the pieces of a Roman soldier's fighting armor to illustrate spiritual truths and principles. Truth is like the thick leather belt that a soldier wore. Righteousness is like the metal breastplate. The gospel is like the sturdy sandals or shoes. Faith is like the large shield that they carried. Salvation is like the essential helmet that they wore. Now, as the last spiritual analogy in this section, Paul likens the Roman soldier's sword to be like the word of God. In fact, he even calls God's word the sword of the spirit. This idea is both simple and powerful, that the spirit provides a sword for you, and that sword is the Word of God. To effectively use the sword of the Spirit, we can't regard the Bible as a book of magic charms or tie a Bible around our neck the way that garlic is superstitiously said to drive away legendary vampires. No, to effectively use the sword of God's Word, we must regard it as the Word of God. As Paul plainly wrote, which is the word of God there in verse 18. If we're not confident in the inspiration of scripture, that the sword really came from the Holy Spirit, then we will not use it effectively at all. But we must also take the sword of the Spirit in the sense of depending that he helps us to use it. You see, not only did the Spirit give us the Scriptures, but He also makes them alive to us, and He equips us with the right thrust of the sword at the right time. Think of a soldier, or maybe a gladiator in training. He's practicing sword thrusts and moves and positions. He must practice them ahead of time. And if he is a superior fighter, and if he has a great fighting instinct, at the time of the battle, he will instantly recall which thrust, which position suits the precise moment. He will never be able to use that thrust of the sword in the fight if he has not yet first practiced it. Yet he still needs to make the move at the moment of the fight. Therefore, Effectively using the sword takes practice. The great example of this in the Bible is when Jesus combated the temptation of Satan in the wilderness. Martin Luther was another example of this when he came to an understanding of Psalm 31 verse 1, which says, Deliver me in your righteousness. This helped Luther to understand the real meaning of the just will live by faith as it's found in Romans 1, Galatians 3, and Hebrews 10. You see, both Jesus in the wilderness and Luther in his struggles, and you and I today, we can use the sword of the Spirit at the necessary moment because we work with it beforehand. Again, in the same way, our study and interest in the Word of God prepares us to use its truth, its principles at the necessary moment. In the needful moment, we can answer every lie that comes from the world, the flesh, and the devil with the truth from heaven. In those times, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, is our offensive attacking weapon. The only offensive weapon given among the entire spiritual armor. So appreciate the power and the sharpness of the sword of the Spirit and spend some time in God's Word today.